So today, <coughs> you can see the slide. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about, you know, things that are holding us back in our life and can we do something to change that? A lot of us, most of us, right? We spend almost all our lives just saying this one phrase, I wish. I wish I could do a startup. I wish I could leave this job that I hate. I wish I could do this, I could do that. And the, the one question that I've always thought is, if we wish, why don't we do? What is stopping us? It turns out, this is stopping us. Not my dog, right? His name is Simba. He is a, a very sweet dog and he, he will not come in your way. Right? Now here, you see he's tied to this chair. Now like any dog, what does he want to do? He wants to run around, he wants to jump. But he's stuck. He's held back, he's bound. He's bound by what? He's bound by that chair, a small light plastic chair. Right? How much does that chair weigh? So, in reality, right, that chair will weigh probably a kilogram, but in his mind, that chair weighs a mountain. Right? Now, this is not just his reality, this is, this is what is happening and what happens to, it happens to me, it happens to you, it happens to all of us. We are held back by that one chair. We are, not, we are not held back because we don't have money. What is holding us back is not the family we are born in, it is not our surname, it's not our height, not our weight, not our skin color, it's not our passport. It's not even your college degree. What is holding, what is holding us back is that one kg chair. That's it. Now, you may ask the question, okay, it kind of sounds good, but then, you know, this is real life. In real life, there are constraints. So I don't deny that. I'm not saying that money does not matter or luck does not play any role. Those things are important, for sure. I'm not even, I'm not even saying that you know, if, you, if you decide to do something, the whole world will conspire to make it happen, right? There's something you must have seen. Turns out, the world is really bad at conspiring, right? So what you see here, this is, this is nonsense, right? It's not going to happen. But, but the fact remains that even though we cannot do everything we want, even it's not true that and if you decide to do something, you can do it. It's not true that and if you want to be somebody, you can just be that guy. But, but, we can do a lot more than what we think we can do. My dog, if he decides to fly, can he fly? No, he cannot do that. But he can do a lot better than being bound to a one kg chair. So here's the question, why, why does he not break free? That chair, the, this, my dog is very strong, if he decides to give it a push, the chair will go rolling on the floor. And yet, he never pulls or never pushes a chair. Why is that? Because he assumes that it is, it is very, very heavy. This is not just Simba's story. This is the story of all of us. And if you're not careful, one day this could be your story. We just assume that the things that are, that are weighing us down, they are infinitely heavy. Now today I want to share some stories with you from my life to show you how that one kg chair is weighing all of us down. Many years back, I was in a wedding, and uh, this one guy I just happened to meet, he walked by, he was a guest, and then he asked me, what do you do? So I said, uh, I, said I was an IPS officer, and now I have resigned and I, I run a startup. So this guy happened to be an IS officer, and uh, so when he heard that, he said, wow, like, that's so amazing. So many times I wanted to quit the IAS, but somehow I just could not gather the courage. Now just think about it. This guy is most likely a very talented, a smart guy. He's exactly the kind of person who should not be scared, who should not be worried about uncertainty, and yet he is very, very scared. What is weighing him down? 
that one kg chair. And it's not just him. I know lots of civil servants, IAS, IPS officers, and a lot of them, trust me, a lot of them are not happy with their jobs. They want to do something different, but every single time the same question comes up, right? Uncertainty, risk, what can I do? I was, uh, I was, in, I was in New York for some time after my MBA, and uh, I used to, I would come across a lot of these people who work in investment banking firms, who work in consulting firms, and I'm talking about these guys who, are, who have business degrees and law degrees from the world's top universities. Harvard, Chicago, Wharton, Stanford, MIT, Kellogg, you name it. And yet, we were all united by just one thing. Fear of what might happen. Now, the jobs these guys were doing, as an example, being an investment banker in a Wall Street firm, I think it is one of the most soul-sucking jobs that you can imagine. And these are guys probably the smartest in this world. And I am pretty sure many of them hate their job every single day. And yet, yet, they cannot break free. That is what is pulling them back. Now you could say, yeah, sure, but then there's real world. I agree. I'm not saying that you know, real world constraints don't matter. I'm not saying money doesn't matter. All those things do matter, but compared to all those constraints, the biggest constraint is in our head. I'll give you one more example. Um, there, was a, there was a friend of mine, a mutual friend um, from IIT. I was talking to him a, a couple of years back, and uh, we, were, we were chatting, and he was telling me that he loves teaching science. He used to teach science to his kids, and he said, very longingly, you know, one day, one day I would like to start my own company and, and teach science. So then I asked him, like, why don't do it now? He said, um, yeah, I want to, but, you know, it's a risk. What will happen? You know, dare like that. Now the question is, why is he scared? And what is he waiting for? He's waiting for, he's waiting for that one magical day when there'll be no fear, there'll be no uncertainty, when everything will be safe and predictable. And that day will come. When will that come? This is that day. Right? Now, studies have proven that when you die, your ability to do things kind of goes down, but not this guy. Right? So we are all, <laughs> a lot of us are waiting for for that magical moment, and then we will start doing things. Now we know that's not going to happen. Right? Now let me share my own story. I was uh, an IPS officer for about eight years, and um, then I decided to quit and do an MBA. Now the funny thing is this. Whomever I would tell, my friends, my relatives, anybody that I'm going to leave, so they would say, yeah, he's just blabbering. You know, he's frustrated. You know, let, let him vent, he'll be fine. Nobody would take me seriously. Then uh, one day, you know, I had gone to Orissa, and uh, my in-laws' place, and there was some family wedding going on. So in between the wedding festivities, whenever, whenever there was some gap, I would, I would sit and I'd be reading those GMAT prep guides. That's when my father-in-law, he asked uh, my wife, is he serious? She said, yeah. Now, you can imagine his shock, right? So he must be thinking, like, you know, this guy, first he marries my daughter, now he's gone totally nuts, you know, doing all this stuff. Right? And, and obviously everyone dissuaded me. In fact, for many years I did not even tell them that I'm leaving the IPS or that I've left. Right? Uh, now the question is, these people, they don't mean harm, they, they mean well for me. Yet, yet, they don't want you to, they didn't want me to leave this job. Now why is that? Let me, let me explain something about the Indian Police Service. If you join as an IPS officer, this is your career progression. In four years' time you become an SP. 14 years DIG, 18 years IGP, 25 years additional Director General of Police, another three to four years DGP, and then I would have retired at 5 p.m. on 31st August 2032. Please don't back calculate my age, don't be a pest, okay? Now, 
Imagine a career where you know exactly what will happen 30 years later. And you quit the job, and you don't know what will happen the next day. <laughs> right? Now think about the difference in the uncertainty, and that is why people do not want to take the chance. And they tell you, no, no, don't, don't leave the job, don't do that. But then I could ask a counter question that risk is not a bad thing. Risk is meant to keep you safe from danger. It makes you make sure you don't do stupid things. So the question is, is there a problem? I think there is a problem. And the problem is not with avoiding risk. The problem is that as human beings, we inherently hate risk and our intuition is unable to quantify risk properly. And I'm going to now do a live experiment with you. This is based on the research done by a professor called Daniel Kahneman, who, was a, who is a Nobel Prize winning Nobel laureate. Right? So here's an experiment. Okay? I want to take a bet with you guys. Okay? We will toss a coin. 50-50 chance. 50% you win, 50% you lose. If you win, if you win, you get two lakhs. From me, right now, cash. Cash is allowed, okay, don't worry. Now, if you lose, you have to give me one lakh rupees. So here's a question for the audience. How many of you will take that bet? Raise your hand. Not too many, but a couple, right? I expected more because this is like bits go. You guys were thinking like, what man, one lakh, two lakh, take 10 lakhs, you know, don't bother me, right? But. <laughs> But if you, if you propose this bet to like, you know, people in general, a vast majority of people will not take the bet. Right? The question is why? The odds make sense. In fact, I would argue if you, if you do this, if you do this, take this bet 10 times, the probability of your being out of pocket is very, very low. And yet, we are not willing to take the bet. And the reason is that People hate losing things. We have something called loss aversion. Right? If, so gaining is important, but losing what we have causes a lot more anxiety, a lot more pain. Now the question is, as professionals, I mean for you guys, right? does it really matter? I think it matters. This is why. Now, so there, there are two guys. right? The one on the left, he is loaded with all these degrees, you know, bits and IIT, IM, whatever. Right? And the guy on the right, he is from some no-name university. Now, here's the question. If both these guys start looking for a job, who has a better chance of finding a job? Come on. Left, the left guy or the right guy? Left guy, come on. It's you. You have a better chance. Yet, if you have to take a risk or if he has to take a risk, who will have a higher capacity to take risk? From my experience, the guy on the left is just somebody like you and me. Why is that? Because, because of your degree, because of professional qualification, you have a lot to lose. Versus a guy who has, who has nothing. He has nothing to lose, and the guy who has nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Right? That is, that's exactly what's happening. And this is what is holding us down. Um, in summary, right, I would... I would like to share with us that you know when I when I left the IPS, right, uh, people think that it was a it was a crazy risky step. To be honest, that was not that was not the step which was risky. Right? What was risky was when I left my last job to to become an entrepreneur. That was risky, and I'll be candid with you. I've gone through ups. I've gone through downs. I've gone gone through a lot more downs than ups, and financially and many other ways, I've been better off doing a job. But then it's a choice I made, and I'm happy with the choice. Today I run the startup called Concept Owl, and I teach science here. And, and finally, in this conference, the theme is Eureka, to discover yourself. Right? Now, how do you discover yourself? You don't discover yourself by sitting on a couch and, and watching TV. Right? Columbus discovered America. What did he do? He got on a ship, and he sailed. Now, he wanted to get to India, right? but he got to America, and that's fine. If you want to discover yourself, get up from your couch, get on a ship, and sail. 
You may not get to India, but I can assure you, you will get somewhere. Thank you.